Papaano ba maging isang tunay na epektibong Christian leader? Yun ay ang ating pag-uusapan sa mga sandaling ito. Pareho ba ang isang Christian leader kumpara sa ibang leader sa ating mundong ginagalawan? When it comes to leadership, is a Christian leader a leader within the Christian context or that person is a leader in any context? Dalawang ating objective as we talk about Christian leadership or being a Christian leader. Unang-una is the, how is Christian leadership different from non-Christian leaders? Ano yung pagkakaiba? Pangalawa, ma-identify natin. For us to identify the Christian leaders in the early church. Para may kumpara natin, ano ba yung kaibahan natin ngayon? Okay? Sa mga Christian leaders ngayon, sa mga sinaunang panahon or during the early church, during the first century church. So, pag-uusapan natin yan, okay, sa mga sandaling ito. Okay, remember about our objective? Dalawang ating objective, makita natin yung difference ng isang Christian leader sa mga hindi Christian leader. At pangalawa, makita natin kung anong klase mga leader ang meron during the early church. Okay, so there are distinctives of Christian leadership. At yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Okay? And uh, I want you to jot down para yung mga matututunan natin, meron tayong kopya at uh, maisulat din natin ito at maituro sa ibang tao. The purpose of teaching, the purpose of learning is for you to teach is to pass it on to others also. Okay? So, kaya mahalaga sa atin as Christian leaders, uh, pay attention and listen, don't multitask. If you're doing something, i-pause mo muna at gawin mo yung mga bagay na ginagawa mo. Okay? So I'm so excited to teach you, mahal, mahal kong kapatid. Marami tayong matututunan as a real Christian leader. Okay, unang-una is the, a Christian leader. Okay? A Christian leader, okay, uh, needs to be, to experience conversion first. Okay? Kailangan may personal conversion muna. Siya ay nagkaroon muna ng ng muling kapanganakan, na tinatawag ba, yung born again experience na kung saan tinanggap niya ang Panginoong Yesus bilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas ng kanyang buhay. Yun ang unang-una para matawag natin na ang isang leader ay Christian leader. Pupwedeng leader siya pero hindi siya Christian leader. So that's the distinction, right? Unang-una, may conversion. Ito yung tinatawag na born again experience okay? or personal conversion. Remember Apostle Paul, di ba? Dahil dati siya ay tumutugis sa mga mananampalataya. Pero nagkaroon siya ng encounter. Okay? So, itong conversion na ito, I would also call this divine encounter. Napakahalaga ng divine encounter. And divine encounter can come in different ways. Okay? In ways that it's so hard to explain. Ang mahalaga bilang isang Christian leader na experience ito. Para masabi na ikaw, yes, ikaw, mahal na kapatid ngayon, nanonood, ay matawag na Christian leader, kailangan meron kang ano, personal conversion. Okay? Na-convert ka talaga through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Pangalawa, kailangan nandun yung, ano, yung recognition. Okay? Recognition mo doon sa kahalagahan ng, ng kaligtasan. Okay? So, you recognize the need for salvation na in, na ina-admit mo na na ikaw ay makasalanan, na sa biyaya at grasya ng Panginoon, ikaw ay nasa labas at yak nakapahamakan at mayroong kaloob ang ating Diyos na grasya sa pamamagitan ng kanyang bugtong na anak, ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo at sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya sa kanya nagkakaroon tayo ng kaligtasan. So, yun yung maliwanag. Okay, nagkaroon ka ng conversion, na definitely kasabay ng conversion na yun, na iniisip mo na, na ina-admit mo sa puso't isipan mo na kailangan mong magkaroon ng kaligtasan. Okay? And definitely, ang isang Christian leader, ang kanyang uh, buong pagtitiwala, ang kanyang um, buong buhay ay nilalagak niya, okay? Sa kamay ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Okay? You're, you're placing, as a Christian leader, you're placing your trust in the Lordship of our King and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? The only begotten Son of God. Okay, and another thing, yung ano, yung nabanggit ko kanina, pag-experience mo ito ng tinatawag na spiritual birth. Okay? Spiritual birth. Okay, ibig sabihin, pwede natin sabihin dito na personal conversion, 
uh, nakarinig ka ng gospel, right? Pero that's not enough, okay? That's why I told you earlier, yung born again experience or pag-experience mo ng spiritual birth. Hindi lahat na nakakapakinig ng salita ng Diyos, automatic nun, nagiging kristyano na. Sila na nagkakaroon ng spiritual birth or pinanganak sa spirito, right? Kaya nga tinatawag ng born again experience and it's not a religion, okay? It is an event, okay, na nangyari sa buhay mo bilang isang mananampalataya. Okay, so unang-una, ang Christian leader, higit sa ano paman, pagkatapos mo makita yung mga distinctives na ito, ang isang Christian leader ay committed. Okay? A Christian leader is committed. Hindi committed ah. <laughs> ang committed, ibig sabihin devoted ka kung ano ginagawa mo, talaga namang dedication mo, uh, hindi ka mapapatigil. Bakit? Nandun ang commitment. Okay? A Christian leader is committed. And being a Christian is not enough. Maraming mga Christian pero hindi committed, di ba? Alam ko may kakilala ka. Ayan, naiisip mo na siguro kung sino siya, di ba? So, being a Christian is not enough. Okay? Because not all Christians are effective leaders. Tama ba? Do you agree? O, type mo dyan. Okay? Kung napapunod mo to dito sa Facebook Live, type mo dyan. I agree. Okay? Hindi lahat ng Christians committed. As a matter of fact, ang daming churchgoers na they call themselves Christians pero hindi committed. Merong iba, committed. Kumikitid, <laughs> di ba? And that's the reason why we we are studying about Christian leadership. Para maging malinaw sa atin, paano ba tayo magiging epektibong mga leader na Kristiyano? Okay? So, this is very clear, right? Kailangan tayo ay uh, committed. Uh, hindi kasi lahat ay uh, may commitment. Tama ba? Commitment to Christ, Jesus, is the starting point. Okay? That's being a disciple. Kung makikita natin ang Biblia, di ba? Uh, tinabi ng Panginoon sa mga disipulo. Okay? Sa ilan sa mga disipulo. Referring to all the disciples, right? You wanna, you wanna follow me? Okay? You must deny. Okay? Anyone who wants to follow me must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. What does it mean? It simply means commitment. Mahal na kapatid, a Christian leader is a committed leader. O pwede ang isang tao committed na leader pero hindi kristyano, pero ang isang kristyanong leader ay committed. Okay? Committed. Okay. Ibig sabihin nun, as a Christian leader, you have to set an example of your commitment. You're setting an example for others to follow. That whatever happens, you'll be committed bilang isang Christian leader. Right? I hope that's very clear. Unang-una, as a Christian leader, andun ang commitment. Okay? If you are leading this group of people, or if you're a pastor or core leader, if you're a church leader, unang-una, ituro natin sa ating mga kapatid sa pananampalataya. Okay? Sila man ay nagsisimula pa lang o medyo matagal-tagal na bilang mananampalataya. Unang-una, after nila ma-experience yung born-again experience na tinatawag o, o spiritual birth, okay? ang isang Christian leader ay may commitment. Right? Ano ba? Ang pagdating sa mga desisyon sa buhay, pagdating sa mga, siyempre ang leader, yan ay nilalapitan, right? Humingi ng payo, maraming tao. O anong gagawin dito, anong gagawin dyan? So napakahalaga yung source ng katotohanan ng isang leader. Ang isang leader lang, hindi Christian leader, maraming mga sources yan. Pero ang Christian leader, mayroon tayong source ng katotohanan. Okay? And a Christian leader source is the truth. Yung katotohanan, yun ang ating source. Okay? And the source of truth is what we call divine revelation. Okay? Divine revelation. At twofold itong divine revelation na ito. Unang-una yung tinatawag nating special revelation. Ano ba yung special revelation? Pag sinabing special revelation, nandiyan yung Biblia. Okay? That's special revelation. Okay? The Bible provides what? The life of Christ, God's special grace, and God's word. So dito natin makikita yung special na revelation ng Diyos sa atin as we study the Word of God. And we call it, okay, in theology, okay, sa mga nag-aaral ng teologiya dyan, as special revelation. Ngayon, the other one is what we call the general revelation. Ano ba itong general revelation? Ito yung ano, ito yung maobserbahan natin sa ating mga paligid. So, God's truth found in nature. Pag tinignan natin yung ating paligid, right, in the book of Romans chapter 1, Verse 20, hindi ako nagkakamali. Okay, 19 onwards. May kita natin doon. When we look uh, 
uh, around us, makita natin talaga yung general revelation na may Diyos. Regardless of the family backgrounds, religious backgrounds, na iyong kinalakihan, mahal kong kababayan, makikita mo when you observe your surroundings, may Diyos. Bakit? Imposible na biglang may lumitaw na lang na walang manilika. Tama? Merong Diyos na lumikha ng lahat ng bagay. So, when you observe your surroundings, the things around us, andun yung general revelation. That God's truth, this is referring to God's truth found in nature. The Bible is true, but not all truth is found in the Bible. Yes. Hindi lahat ng katotohanan, okay, nasa Biblia. Okay? Kaya may tinatawag na special revelation at may tinatawag na general revelation. Lahat ng nasa Biblia, totoo. Pero hindi lahat ng totoo nasa Biblia. That's why we need the general revelation as we look around us. Right? Okay, so just to uh, show to you this uh, diagram para maging clear sa atin, ito yung, ito yung twofold ng source natin bilang mga Christian leader. Okay, mahal na kapatid, mahal na fellow leader. Look at this. Kita natin yung revelation. May tinatawag na general revelation at special revelation. Okay, pag sinabing general, it refers to the natural world. Okay, sa lugar, sa mundo na ating ginagalawan, right? So, special naman, referring to the scriptures or the word of God. Yung Biblia na ating inaaral. Okay? So, makikita natin, pag inaral natin yung natural word at scripture, they are in complete agreement. Tama ba? And then, andyan naman, sa natural word, yung tinatawag natin na scientific study or social studies. Right? Okay? Andyan yung pag-aaral. Okay? Ngayon, ang scripture, pag inaaral natin yan, ang tawag yan is theological study. Right? Pero dito sa natural world, we call it scientific study. Okay? Or sometimes they call it social science research, etc. etc. Okay? So kapag pinag-usapan natin itong general revelation, natural world, or scientific study, diyan papasok yung empirical research. Ibig sabihin may mga evidence na maobserbahan natin. Yan yung ibig sabihin ng general revelation. Ngayon, sa special revelation naman, as you study the word of God, may tinatawag yung exegesis. Inaaral mo kung ano ba ibig sabihin talaga, ano ibig sabihin ng salita, right? Uh, meron dyan tinatawag na was this expository pa, etc. So, what, that, that's what we call biblical exegesis. Inaaral mo yung Biblia, okay? From uh, kung ano ba yung konteksto nito, geographical, right? Historical context, etc., etc. Okay? Isa isama mo na diyan yung exegesis na tinatawag. Okay, ngayon, pag pinag-combine mo yan, dito papasok yung leadership truths. Okay? Ito, dito nagbabase ng mga desisyones ang isang Christian leader. Yan. So, maliwanag na ha. Ang source ng ating mga desisyones bilang leader ay nagmumula sa general revelation at special revelation. Okay, now, ano pa yung mga makikita nating dapat sa isang Christian leader? Another thing is pagkakaroon ng ano, godly character. Hmm. Siyempre, kung ikaw kumikilala sa Panginoong Heso Kristo, kung ikaw kumikilala sa Diyos, dapat yung kinikilala mong Diyos nagre-reflect. Okay, big sabihin, nakikita yung attitude and character ng Diyos doon sa iyo na kumikilala sa Kanya. Tama ba? Okay, that's why a Christian leader has to have a godly Character. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng character? Pag sinabing character, yan yung ano, sum total ng qualities ng isang tao. Ano ba yung qualities niya? Ang ganda ng character niya. Ibig sabihin, ang ganda ng mga qualities na meron siya. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. So, isang Christian leader, dapat, this is not optional, okay? Having a, a good character, having a good uh, godly character is not an option in becoming a Christian leader. Character. Dapat meron dito lagi. Okay? So remember, itong karakter natin napakalaga. At yung sum total ng iyong mga katangian bilang isang tao. Okay? And right now, when we look at the, when we try to observe uh, sa ating generation ngayon, mahal kong kapatid, mahal kong kababayan, makikita mo that we, we, we would agree, right? Uh, dito sa statement na ito, that Now, the greatest crisis ngayon in leadership ano, is a crisis of character. Tama? Kaya maraming mga, mananam, mga, mga, mga baby Christians ang instead na lumago, na stumble. Bakit? Kasi when they observe their Christian leaders and uh, dapat may godly character, pero wala eh. Naisip nila, wala. 
leader, Christian leader, pero wala naman, bokya naman when it comes to attitude and character. Kaya maraming mga mga tao na ligaw na instead na madala natin pabalik sa Panginoon, mas lalo pa silang naliligaw. That is why this teaching is very important, right? Isend natin ito sa ating mga kakilala, mga kapastoran, sa mga kakilala natin mga brothers and sisters, right? Na patuloy tayo lumago as an effective Christian leader. Okay, ano pa? Ang isang karakter ng ng leader, according to Apostle Paul, sa kanyang mensahe, sa kanyang uh, wastis, mga inaalaga ang kapwa manggagawa sa Panginoon, eh talaga namang maliwanag na maliwanag kung ano yan, okay? So, uh, sabi niya rito, above reproach daw. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo talaga matatawaran, ano? Ibig sabihin, you can check the family, you can check the behavior, you can check how how the uh, how the, this Christian leader handles finances, everything, etc., etc. The motives of the, of the, this Christian leader. So, dapat above reproach. Ano ibig sabihin yun? Dapat magsilbing modelo. Ang Christian leader, dapat modelo. And it's not an option. Hindi yung, hindi naman ko kaya maging model. If you cannot really model uh, the life of a Christian leader, hindi dapat tayo maging Christian leader. It's okay to become a Christian, right? You, you become a Christian, okay? Pero to become a Christian leader is on another level, mahal kong kapatid sa Panginoon, right? So, uh, may, may different levels tayo ng leadership, definitely. Pero bilang isang disipulo ng Panginoon, right? bilang isang manggagawa na gusto mo pang lumago na lumago as a Christian leader, uh, being a model is a must. Okay? Ano pa? Napagkit ko kanina yung motibo. Motibo natin dapat maayos as a leader. Okay? So, Christian leader understands motives. Ano ba yung motibo natin? Bakit natin gusto mag-lead? Okay? As a Christian leader, napakahalaga ng motibo natin. At hindi lahat ng leader maganda ang motibo. At hindi lahat ng leader tama ang motibo. Hindi ibig sabihin maganda ang motibo, tama na ang motibo. Right? Hindi lahat ng tama maganda. Pupwede maganda, okay, yung motibo ng isang leader, pero hindi tama. Right? Bakit? Kasi bilang isang Christian leader, dapat ang motive natin, itong mga ito. Unang-una, for us to spread the gospel. Kaya mo gustong mag kasi gusto mo may pangaral ang mabuting balita ng kaligtasan. Because it has the power to change people's lives. It has the power to renew the spirit. It has the power to to save the lost. It's a, it has the power to redeem those people who are doomed to destruction. Right? So, ang motive natin as a Christian leader is to spread the gospel. Right? Yan. Pangalawa, our motive is to please God, not people. Kasi, Bilang isang Christian leader, mangangaral ka ng katotohanan. Marami kang sasagasaan, marami may inggit sa'yo, marami magagali sa'yo. Bakit? Kasi pinapangaral mo ang katotohanan. Pero pag pinapangaral mo, yung mga, yung mga gusto lang marinig ng mga tao, matutuwa sila sa'yo. Oh, yeah! Ganon. Di ba? Okay, wala kang kaaway. But when you become a Christian leader, hindi mo pipiliin yung ipapangaral mo. Ipapangaral mo kung alin yung tama, kung alin yung katotohanan based on the revelation, the special revelation, and sa general revelation na tinalaki natin kanina, di ba? Okay? So, your motive, our motive as Christian leaders is to please God and not people. Right? Yes. Kung ano yung ginagawa ang pangangaral, okay, if you really believe that it, it is pleasing to God, kahit may masaktan ka, mahalaga, nagmamahal ka, mahal na ka Right? Okay? So, you're there. The motive must be to preach the gospel and to please God and to tell, sabihin, right? Sabihin sa mga tao, hindi yung gusto nilang marinig, kundi yung kailangan nilang marinig, right? May sinasabi si Apostle Pablo, time will come, na yung mga tao, gusto nilang mga ngaral, pakipiking ka nila, yung parang kinikiliti ang kanilang mga tenga, right? And as a Christian leader, this has to be very, very clear, mahal kong kapatid sa Panginoon. Bilang Christian leader, ipangaral ang katotohanan Wag ang kasinungalingan. Ipangaral ang tutulong na makapagbago sa buhay ng ating kapwa sa mga taong pinagsisilbihan natin sa iglesia o sa iba't ibang lugar man yan kesa tayo ay magbigay ng kaluguran sa mga ilan ilan tao for our own benefit. Right? Another thing, we become a Christian leader. Ang motive natin is to serve God, not seeking personal gain. Yan. Ang motive natin, hindi yung, 
ano yung mapapakinabang ko. That's not Christian leadership. Christian leadership is ano yung maiaambag ko sa body of Christ. Ano yung aking maitutulong sa kapwa ko manggagawa. Ang daming mga pastors, ministers all over the world. And a Christian leader, as a Christian leader, I have to do something. I have to contribute something. Right? So, mahal kong kababayan, I hope na tayo, mahal kong kapatid, I hope na tayo ay naliliwanagan about being a Christian leader. Right? A Christian leader also serves by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hindi ito sa ganang atin, hindi ito sa, sa sarili nating lakas. Ang, ang pinanggagalingan ng ating inspirasyon, ang pinanggagalingan ng ating kakayahan ay ang Santong Spirito. Right? Always remember that. That's why the Word of God is telling us, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by the Spirit. It's by the Holy Spirit. Hindi ito, ano, hindi ito, ang, ang Christian leadership ay hindi base sa ating human power and effort. Right? Ito ay through the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. So, ibig sabihin, divine power ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. Right? Divine power. Having the power from the Holy Spirit. Ayan. Okay. Upang tayo ay mapatuloy na makapamuhay for us to live our lives as a good example to other people as we serve and glorify God. Right? So, ang Christian leader din, may mga practices yan. Ano mga practices ng Christian leader? Ibang-iba ang isang Christian leader sa leader sa mundong ating ginagalawan. Ano yun? Kasi ang Christian leader, kung titignan natin, ano yan eh? Nagsaserve. Tama? Ang Christian leader, nagsaserve. Ang leader sa mundong ating ginagalawan, ano? sila'y pinagsisilbihan. Okay? So, makikita natin, a Christian leader is there and that leader okay, is called to serve. Narito ka, narito tayo para tayo ay mag-serve sa, sa tao sa paligid natin, sa ating mga congregations, sa ating mga kapatiran. We're here to serve. Ang tawag doon, Christian leadership, right? Ibig sabihin, kapag ang isang tao ay tinawag na Christian leader, siya ad- dapat merong humility. Bakit? Anong connect nun? Kasi mahirap mag-serve sa iba kapag wala kang kababaang loob. Isipin mo, ganito ako, ganito tinapos ko, magsuserve ako, ganito ako, ganyan, ganito ako. <laughs> Marami kang, parang nahihirapang ang iba bang yung sarili. Ang isang Christian leader, a Christian leader has to be humble. May humility na mag-serve sa ibang tao. Ano pa? Ang motive sa pag-serve ay pag-ibig. Okay? You want to serve because your motive is to love people. Okay? Ikaw ay concerned sa kanya. I remember, meron tayong kapatiran uh, dito sa South Korea uh, na nakausap ko. Well, while she was babae. While well, she was sharing to me, she's still eye Bakit? Kasi she really, she really wants to serve as a Christian leader because merong love for people. Maraming loss, maraming of W, hindi makauwi sa Pilipinas kasi, uh, ano, because of uh, the economic per- reasons, ganyan. And andun yung burden sa kanyang puso. And I could see in her the, 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 the genuine motive of living as a Christian leader. Ayan. So, mahalaga ang motive natin sa pagiging leader ay pag-ibig o pagmamahal. Okay? So, kapag tayo ay Christian leader, ibig sabihin, we become attentive to the needs of others. Okay? Yung mga concerns. Yung mga concerns sa mga taong pinagsisilbihan natin, mga brothers and sisters natin, okay, sa yung iglesia, dun sa mga tao na kung saan part ng yung team as a Christian leader. Right? So, you have to be very sensitive sa kanila ang mga pangangailangan. Right? Ano po pwede mo maitulong sa kanila? Yun ang Christian leader. Okay? Isa pa, ang, ang Christian leader may have the gift of leadership. Yes. Uh, iba kasi yung, yung, yung gift of leadership. Eh. Although ang leadership na hohon yan, na ituturo naman yan, pero ibang level yung gift of leadership. Kasi parang ganito yan. Meron akong classmate dati na was this, uh, ano siya, uh, wala siyang background sa fine arts, wala siyang background sa, hindi siya nag-aral formally, pero pagkagaling-galing, right? Siguro, okay, kung may, baka may time, napapanood niya rin ito, pagkagaling niya. Pag mag- 
Kuguhit siya sa isang wall na ganyan. Kaya niya. Malaking malaking mga painting. Kaya ang kaya niya. That's a gift. Right? Pero meron naman natututunan yon dahil itinuturo. So when it comes to Christian leadership, ang Christian leadership din, po pwedeng maging Christian leader ka uh, through the gifting or through the nurturing. May tinatawag na nature and nurture. Or parang pinanak ka, nature mo na yan. Parang yan. Yung, yung isa naman, na nurture yon Ibig sabihin, ituturo. So, na yung mold. Right? So, Uh, leadership, when we look at the Word of God, leadership is a gift actually. Okay? In the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 8. Nakalagay, leadership is a gift. Ito'y kaloob. Ibig sabihin, gift, binigay sa'yo, hindi iyan. Pinagkaloob sa'yo, may pinagmulan mula sa Panginoon. So, it's a gift. And uh, kapag may gift ka, makikita ito na, uh, ano, this is a kind of gift that would naturally attract followers. Hmm. Kasi ang tunay na leader, you don't force people to follow you. Okay? As a Christian leader, you don't force people to follow you. Okay? As a Christian leader, you attract followers to you. Yan. You attract followers. Hindi ka nagmamakaawa na, please naman, sundin nyo ako, sundan nyo ako. No, 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 no. People are attracted to real Christian leaders. Okay? And there is this natural gift that enables exceptional. Okay? Exceptional what? Exceptional leadership. Ito yung nagbumula din sa Panginoon. Right? Minsan magugulat ka, but kanon na, matindi ang karisma niya. And it's it's so hard to explain. Gift is so hard to explain. Okay? Pero remember, having a gift is not a guarantee that you become an effective Christian leader. That is why we have to understand what Christian leadership is. Po pwedeng gifted ang isang tao, talaga naman may exceptional ability siya leadership, pero kapag pumalya sa mga na-discuss natin kanina, hindi rin magiging effective Christian leader. When we look at the character, when we look at the motive, etc., etc. Right? So, the Christian leaders of the first century church, pupunta naman na tayo sa pangalawa, ang uh, goal ng ating teaching ngayon. When we look at the early Christian leaders in the early church, okay, makikita natin sa first century church, makikita natin kung sino-sino sila at uh, ano-ano ba yung ginagawa nila. Okay? So, tingnan natin itong timeless object uh, timeless directives okay on church leadership kitingnan natin okay <clears throat> makikita natin ito kung ano yung ginagawa nila as christian leaders during the early church dapat ganun din dong ginagawa natin at yung mga early christian leaders sila yung tinatawag na church pastors okay so the first church leaders were the apostles ito yung mga apostles ito yung mga elders at ito yung mga tinatawag na overseers no oversee nila yung different churches. Ayun. So sila yung matatawag na early Christian leaders. Okay? Ah, uh, pag sinabing mga elders, uh, marerefer na rin natin yun sa mga pastors, okay? Uh, during the first century church. And they were likely the pastors, I say said, ano, ng mga house churches because during the early church, ang karamihan is mga house churches lang. Hindi katulad sa sa panahon natin ngayon, mga daming mega churches. Talagang thousands, abutin dyan ng mga 5,000, 10,000, 30,000, 50,000, and more, right? Ganun na kalalaki sa ating kapanahonan. But during the early church, may mga Christian leaders overseeing and taking care of these house churches, right? May maliliit na mga iglesia, right? Kung titignan natin dito sa mga verses, sa mga Bible verses na nilagay natin dito. Okay, now, yung mga responsibility naman nila, tignan natin, ano ba mga responsibility ng mga early Christian leaders. Tingnan natin. Okay. Unang-una, ang mga mga Christian leaders during their time, nandyan sila upang protektahan ang congregation. Okay? Church leaders are there to protect the congregation. Ayan. Kaya, I would always tell the, 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 the family, the spiritual family where I serve, okay? Especially those leaders that you, okay, tell me, okay, kung sino mga mga, ano, o, Bastista, may katuroan na ganito, may kinakausap kayo na hindi ko alam. Please let me know. Because it is the responsibility of the Christian leader okay, to protect the congregation. Mula sa mga turong hindi tama, okay, mula sa mga turo na hindi ayon sa Biblia, mula doon sa mga heretical teaching, at mula doon sa mga guni-guni at mga kuro-kuro lamang ng tao. Okay? Ano pa? Ang mga Christian leader during that time, during the early church, sila ay hindi lang nag hindi lang nagpo-protect, sila rin ay nagtuturo. Okay. So a Christian leader must be able to teach the congregation. 
Ano yung tinuturo? Yung pamumuhay niya, right? Mahirap pagturo kapag hindi mo ginagawa, right? So, that's why I always tell uh, the people and even uh, was this, the uh, graduate students na aking tinuturuan from different nations, I would always tell them, you know, don't listen to good teachers, but listen to good examples, right? So, a Christian leader must be a good example, and if you are a good example, you'll be able to teach the congregation. Matuturuan mo sila. Yun ang pagiging Christian leader. Okay, ano pa? Hindi ka lang nagtuturo, nagbibigay ka rin ng direction. Right? Tinuturo mo, pagkatapos may direction kang ibinibigay. Okay? Ibig sabihin, you're directing or you're leading the congregation. Pag sinabing leading, okay, ikaw yung nangunguna na gumagawa ng mga bagay na tinuturo mo mga buti. Yun, yun. Hindi yung, okay, hindi yung do what I teach you. No. Okay, do what I direct you. No. Do what I do. Oh, ganon. Parang yung sinasabi ni Apostle Pablo in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Sabi niya, follow me as I follow Christ. Yun. Okay? So, kailangan nagbibigay tayo ng direktiba. Yun ang Christian leader. Nagbibigay ka ng direktiba. Hindi tahimik ka. No. Ito yung gagawin nyo. Ito yung example na gagawin nyo. You set an example when it comes to your life. You set an example the way you talk. You set an example the way you live. You set an example the way you give. You set an example in every aspect of your life. Right? As much as possible. Walang perfect naman sa atin na Christian leader. Eh. You know, I love what I, I heard from one of my mentors. Uh, spiritual mentors. Itong si, si, ano, si Pastor Pai. <laughs> Sabi niya, We cannot model perfection. But we can model growth. Yan ang Christian leader. Okay? So, kung nanonood si Pastor Pai, ang isa sa aking mga mentor, Hi there, Pastor Pai. Love you. Okay? So, uh, let's let's continue. Ang Christian leader, pag pinag-usapan natin ang Christian leader, marami pa mga functions ang ginagawa niya. Eh. Okay? Another is yung pananalangin, definitely. As a Christian leader, you have to know how to pray. Okay? You pray for the sick. Pinapa, pinapanalangin mo ang mga may sakit. Siyempre, pinapanalangin mo, hindi lamang yung mga may sakit, pinapanalangin mo yung mga kapatiran na hindi na kailangan nakikita ng ibang tao, hindi na, na, hindi na kailangan uh, makita pa ng iba. Ang mahalaga, ikaw ay nananalangin, nakikita man ng iba, o hindi. Yun na gawain ng isang tunay na Christian leader. Right? Okay? So, ito yung mga gawain ng mga early Christian leaders. So, if you are a Christian leader, makikita natin, ah, ganyan pala yung mga gawain ng isang Christian leader. Hmm. Dapat pala, ikaw ay, uh, you know how to protect the congregation. Kung hindi ka man pastor, you're a Christian leader, you know how to protect your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Especially those people, those brothers and sisters na nagsisimula pa lamang. Right? Kung baga, mga baby Christian pa lang. Pinoproteksyonan mo sila mula doon sa panganib, sa mga turong mali sa mundong ating ginagalawan. Right? Hindi lang yon. Sila rin ay yung tinuturuan. Right? At sila rin ay yung dinidirect. Uh, dinidirect mo sila, ganito dapat, okay? Ganito ang pagiging kristyano, ganito ang pamumuhay, ganoon. So you're directing. Parang ano, parang sa pelikula lang, you're directing. Uh, paano bang gawin? Paano ang aksyon? Ganon. Ganon ang isang Christian leader. And for you to, for you to direct, for you to direct, for you to lead, kailangan alam mo kung ano yung tinuturo at ginagawa mo. Okay? Don't ever teach, Okay? Ano, those teachings na hindi mo pinaniniwalaan at hindi mo ginagawa as a Christian leader. Okay? Now, as I end, mga mahal kong kapatid sa Panginoon, right? If you are watching this na kayo ay grupo or, or ikaw man ay mag, mag-isa, I, uh, I have these few questions for group discussion and for, for your, uh, what's this? Um, self-development, right? After watching this session, ano ano ito mga katanungan na ito? Unang una for your reflection and for the discussion, right? Is a Christian leader a leader only in a Christian context or even non-Christians as well? The next question is, what are your strengths and weaknesses as a leader? Third, who in the early church were the pastors? Fourth question, how do leaders function in the early church? Mahal kong kapatid, I hope na ikaw ay napagpala at naging klaro sa iyo ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng Christian leader. And uh, it is my prayer na ang buhay mo ay magamit sa ating henerasyon upang maging pagpapala 
sa entire body of Christ. Regardless of the name of the church that you belong, mahal kong kapatid, be a true Christian leader. God bless you and see you soon. Bye-bye.